my talk today is called These Are a Few of My Favorite Things. JS. And if you're familiar with musicals or musical theater like I am, then you probably read this title uh, to the tune of the song. These are a few of my favorite things, dot JS, um, because I uh, come to the tech world by way of musical theater, but we will get into that in a second. Let's uh, let's get started, shall we? So, hola, soy Chloe. Um, I am a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft, where I work on the next generation experiences team. Okay. That was a lot of words. Let me explain what that means. Um, basically, it's my job at Microsoft to teach folks how to use different kinds of technologies. Um, on the next generation experiences team, I specifically work with a student and university audience. And students to me is a very broad term because um, you don't have to go to a university to be a student. I feel like we're all lifelong learners and students um, working in software engineering. And I'm super excited to be your keynote speaker today since JavaScript was my very first programming language that I learned when I first started learning how to program. And it's the language that initially got me excited about all of the creative, fun, and interesting things that can be built with code. I've always viewed coding as digital or virtual crafting, so to speak. Um, I love arts and crafts. I was just showing uh, the folks before we started this call, I make Beanie Baby taxidermy. I love to take things apart. Um, all of the, the toys that I had as a kid, I love taking them apart in adulthood, <laughs> like my Furbies and my Tamagotchis. So I really do have a, a special place in my heart for JavaScript. So much so that I have JavaScript leggings. <laughs> These are some leggings that I got um, that have a, a, some fun JavaScript code on them. And I couldn't be more excited to be sharing with you a little bit about myself and a little bit about some of my favorite creative projects using JavaScript. So let's get started, shall we? Now, hopefully we have some people in the chat. Let me know in the chat if you're familiar with the sound of music. Otherwise, you're probably thinking, who's this crazy lady singing <laughs> about tech? But if you've ever seen the musical The Sound of Music, which this name, uh, the name of this talk is named after, you likely know this song, which is, let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. So let's start at the very beginning and let me tell you how I got here, because I think it's really crazy that I'm keynoting a conference about JavaScript. I never thought I would be here. So this image here, this dog makes me laugh, record scratch, freeze frame. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> so my path to engineering has been very non-traditional. I made a career transition into engineering much later in my life, in my late 20s. Um, I didn't know anything about engineering or programming when I was in high school or when I was in college. Um, I didn't know much about engineers other than they wore hoodies and they had really big headphones. Oh my gosh, look, I turned into one. Um, and they had really noisy keyboards. Um, I was working full-time as an office manager in Silicon Valley, but I had done all sorts of roles in the tech world. I worked as a recruiter. I worked in customer support. I was an office manager. I was an executive assistant. So I got to see all the different parts of tech, but I didn't really know what engineers did. And that's because my background was very unique. Um, this is a picture of me singing into a microphone here. I'm not giving a keynote here. I'm just singing, <laughs> doing a little song. Um, that's my dad with the Tom Selleck mustache. And this is my mom, the back of my mom's head here. But my parents were both in the performing arts. Um, my dad is a director playwright and my mother was a costume designer. So I grew up backstage, um, behind the concessions booth in the lobby. I grew up in the costume shop. I would hang out, uh, you know, during the auditions and my life was totally immersed in the arts. Um, my mother who sadly passed away when I was very young, when I was 16, had a really big emphasis on making sure that art was accessible to all kinds of people. So when she found out that the art club at my elementary school required a $40 sign up fee that not all the students could, uh, afford, she made her own free art club. And I take a lot of that with me in all of the work that I do, because I think it's important to have creative arts, especially when you're learning new concepts, which we'll get into in a moment. 
So as I mentioned before, my background is in the performing arts, and I worked for many years as a musical theater actress, and I got to wear a lot of ridiculous wigs, as you can see from these images, <laughs> and I ended up getting my Bachelor of Arts in drama. So I went to school for theater. I learned a lot about how to create theatrical experiences, how to be a good performer, how to engage an audience, and how to make entertaining content. Um, if you asked me when I first started programming if I ever thought my time as an actress would be useful as a developer uh, evangelist, well, I don't think I would have been. Yes, absolutely. But it turns out that having that experience, having that creative arts background has been so useful when it comes to teaching other people and helping others learn technical concepts. Also be, by being an actress, I got to see some really, really amazing shows and some not so very good shows. So I learned a lot about what makes a show entertaining and what makes a show interesting and what makes people want to tune in or focus on something. So although I don't do a lot of singing and dancing and acting as an engineer, I do think a lot about how do I make an experience for someone or teach a concept or create a demo that gets people excited. And in a technical world, that can be pretty difficult. We're learning really deep technical concepts. So flash forward, um, after I was in college and worked as an actress for uh, a couple years, I ended up learning how to code. I played a little bit with JavaScript and really fell in love with being able to make things on my screen, you know, change and alter them and make websites and make different applications. So I ended up attending Hackbrite Academy, which was an all-female software engineering boot camp in San Francisco. Um, it's an all-women's um, program with the mission to change the ratio of women in tech. And that was also a really big change when I came into this industry. I went from theater, where it was mostly women, to um, an industry where it was mostly men. And that was a really big adjustment for me. And I I really, really enjoyed, um, you know, learning all about JavaScript and Python and all of the amazing things I could do. I also learned how to whiteboard at <laughs> this job or at this boot camp. So um, it was a really big life changing experience to learn this new skill and and to apply this, you know, kind of basic JavaScript that I had been working into a fully fledged application. I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world, and it's why I've been a JavaScript fan my whole career. So real quick, I want to share something that I've been thinking a lot about. So if you're my age, I'm 32. Uh, I grew up watching a lot of television programming that was educationally focused. So one of my favorite ones is Bill Nye the Science Guy. I actually have a little Funko Pop of Bill Nye on my desk. And if you never watched Bill Nye the Science Guy, it was one of those shows that your teacher, you get so excited on the days that your teacher would roll in the television. You'd think, oh, we're going to, it's a rainy day. We're going to watch, uh, you know, some kind of movie or TV show. And Bill Nye the Science Guy was on TV, but also something that our teachers would show us all the time because Bill Nye was an entertaining way to show kids how science and STEM could be interesting. Um, I remember watching episodes of Bill Nye the Science Guy about gravity, about space, about how different chemicals would interact with each other. And I could never quite put my finger on why was it that I wasn't necessarily interested in science, but when Bill Nye talked about it, I got really excited about it. And I think that's because there was this entertainment level to what Bill Nye was doing. He wasn't just standing there and delivering a talk saying, this is how science works. And then, you know, the chemical goes into that. He had a whole visual element of it. He would have funny things happen, like inflate a balloon with helium and then have his voice change. And there was this entertainment that came along with learning that made me want to learn. Um, similarly, Schoolhouse Rock was another show that our teachers would often show us. And they were somehow able to make me not only understand how a bill would go through U.S. Congress, but it also taught me how adjectives worked and nouns and different, um, you know, pieces of language would go together. Now, 
if you just have a teacher <laughs> telling you these concepts, they may not stick in your brain. But for me, hearing it in a song, which Schoolhouse Rock, if you've never watched it before, it's a cartoon that has music that tells you how different, you know, concepts work. I was able to remember those things. Actually, I think the reason I know how a bill is passed in Congress is because of the song, I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. I mean, I was a kid. Why was I caring why, how bills were passed in Congress? And then, of course, there's Magic School Bus. Um, which was a cartoon. I was a little bit old for this one, but I, I secretly really enjoyed watching it. And this was all about this really cool teacher who had this magic school bus and all of the kids would get in the school bus and they would go on different adventures to space. My favorite episode, they shrunk down the bus and they there was a, a student who was sick and they like went into his body and, you know, looked at, you know, oh, there's his lungs and there's his heart. And that's how I learned about the human body. It was so much more interesting to learn about these concepts in a cartoon with a cool teacher. And I want you to take a moment and think about in your entire education, this can be from kindergarten through college, or just a person that you have in your life. There are certain teachers and certain people that we learn from where concepts just stick with us because we either really remember the concept because of the way it was taught to us or the teacher who taught it to us. Um, and there's these really special educators in our lives who are able to do this. And I think while you're listening to this talk today and, and I'm showing you some of these examples, start thinking about ways that you can teach concepts to others that makes the content exciting and interesting. Um, Additionally, I'm a, I'm a child of the 90s, and I grew up with a lot of early childhood education software. Now, this was the very, very early days of um, computer graphics, so I'm, I'm dating myself here by showing you some of these images. Um, this one over here on the, on the far side is Math Blasters. I hated math. <laughs> um, I did not enjoy math, but I did really enjoy playing math blasters. And that's because I had to solve different, you know, puzzles. And every time that I solved a math problem, it would, you know, shoot something on the screen or I would save someone from space. Um, and suddenly it turned into this situation where math was not awful anymore. Now you have to be really careful um, in situations like this. My friend, Dr. Guthels likes to call it chocolate broccoli. Um, so there's ways to teach people um, concepts, but then there's kind of ways that aren't so uh, interesting to learn. So I remember I loved Math Blasters, but my teacher gave me this cassette tape of math rap where it was like, one plus one is two. And I did not like that. <laughs> so you have to make sure that in context, it's, it's fun and it's interesting, right? Um, this game here was called Right Camera Action. I loved this game. It had to do with um, writing scripts and, you know, learn, but I had no idea as a kid that it was teaching me vocabulary, um, which is incredible to think back on. I still have a lot of vocabulary words that I use from this game. And then in school, um, I went to school at a time in the 90s where computer lab were a thing. <laughs> they were brand new. We had all these computers and we learned how to type using Mavis Beacon teaches typing. You can see this chameleon up here. And what you would do is you would type the letters that were on the screen and the chameleon would like eat the different letters and it would tell you if you typed it correctly. But it made learning so much more interesting to have it in this gamified, enjoyable, entertaining context. Um, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Carmen Sandiego. Um, if you've never played Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, it was a cultural staple of the 90s. Um, this game had a lot to do with geography. So you were looking for Carmen Sandiego, this mysterious woman in this red uh, fedora and red coat. And I remember I would have to answer all these questions about geography. Now, when it came to geography class in school, I couldn't care less. I, I, I could not pay attention because it was not interesting to me. I'd never traveled anywhere in the world, didn't have context for it. But when I had to solve where Carmen Sandiego lived, you bet I was learning <laughs> this information about Ecuador, Brazil, you know, London. I knew about all these facts about different cities because, oh, I had to find Carmen San Diego using that information. So putting learning in context is super important. Um, and of course, I have to mention Clippy, right? Hopefully people in the chat are, are old enough to know Clippy or maybe have seen memes about Clippy. If you don't know who Clippy is, Clippy was this magical sentient <laughs> paperclip that was a feature of Microsoft Word. So um, the cool thing about Clippy is basically Clippy was 
onboarding documentation, right? Um, so you would go into Microsoft Word, you would start writing a letter or an essay, and Clippy, this little paper clip, would pop up and say, oh, it looks like you're writing a letter. How can I help? And I remember as a kid, when Clippy popped up in the uh, in my Microsoft Word, I got so excited because it was this little buddy that I could ask questions to to write my paper. Now, we were having a little too much fun with Clippy in the 90s, and our teacher had to disable it on all of our Microsoft Word. But I think this really speaks to, you know, having fun and gamification. There's such a big difference between going to a help menu or going to a tooltip than seeing this paperclip. And of course, you could change out the paperclip. You could make it a dog a wizard. There was a a dolphin that you could switch it to. Um, But I think this really speaks to why we love Clippy so much. There's all this nostalgia now for, you know, Clippy making a comeback and Clippy is now a new Windows emoji. And I think that's because Clippy was the original, you know, kind of teacher of Microsoft to my generation. So um, yeah, the more fun that you could have while learning, the better. So what do I do? You're like, what does this crazy, quirky lady (laughs) do for a living? Well, my job is really interesting. Um, My job involves a lot of teaching other developers um, how to use really, really in-depth technical concepts. And this is a really unique role. Um, At at Microsoft, we call it uh, cloud advocacy. It can also be called developer advocacy, developer evangelism. But essentially, when there's any sort of developer tool or an API, there needs to be someone who can advocate for that product, right? And be able to teach developers and show developers how to use those different tools. So what I love about my job is I have to make very, very difficult technical concepts like machine learning, chat bots, you know, Azure functions, all of these things that very serious engineers are using in their day-to-day life. Um, And I have to teach those concepts to students, to, you know, enterprise folks, all sorts of different people in walks of life. But when you're learning a technology, it's hard to retain information, at least for me. I, as I mentioned before, I saw some very, very good musicals, some very, very bad musicals. Um, But there are certain things that make you remember things. Um, And and that is the concept of memory hooks. And I have this slide up here where I'm talking about memory hooks that I'll get into in a second. But think back to a time, either in school or maybe you were watching a talk, that you really remembered that talk. Maybe it was a keynote that you saw. Maybe it was a teacher who was teaching a certain concept to you. And think about what it was that made you remember that lesson. Now, typically, the answer to that is going to be some sort of entertaining element, something that either pulls at our heartstrings or makes us laugh or keeps us engaged and interested. So this is the concept of memory hooks. And if you don't know what a memory hook is, um, basically, it's it's something that that I try to add into everything that I create. Statistically, making people laugh is one of the fastest ways of breaking down barriers between strangers and winning, you know, goodwill of people. So a memory hook doesn't have to be funny to be memorable. They could be emotional. So think like Don Draper in Mad Men, if you've ever seen Mad Men, when he tells like a very spirited, you know, emotionally driven speech. Um, And the beauty of a memory hook is that I they get our brain's attention and they're able to pull us in. So my favorite example of this that I can remember is, um, so this is Jessica Dean right behind me. And over on this side is the late, great Abel Wang. And I'll never forget seeing this talk at Live 360. They were giving a super, super technical in-depth talk about DevOps. And halfway through the talk, they switched hair. (laughs) So Abel, who's on the far side of this picture, had really long, uh, luscious black hair. And Jessica Dean has really short, um, like blonde hair. And halfway through the talk, this very technical talk on DevOps, they decided to put on wigs, switch the wigs, and give the talk from the perspective of each other. And I'll never forget that talk. You know, it was a deeply, deeply technical talk, but I was so engaged and I was laughing and I was enjoying it and hearing the perspective from each person as each other, you know, helped me solidify those concepts um, in my mind. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go on stage or into a meeting with some crazy wig or costume, but I give you permission to have fun and get creative with your memory hooks and think about ways that you can help solidify that information for people. So 
as a result of coming from this performing arts background and having the experience that I do in entertainment, um, I always kind of want to have some sort of entertainment element to the con to the technical concepts that I am teaching. So I have this uh, image here of Anne Hathaway from when she was on RuPaul's Drag Race, and it says, "Don't forget to have fun." My job as a cloud advocate is to teach and educate people very technical concepts, but I'm here to say that it's okay to have fun while you do that. Um, I'm going to show you now a couple examples. I went through my archives of uh, <laughs> my very, very first JavaScript that I wrote. I, I dug through Instagram to find this for you. So I'm going to show you a couple examples here. So uh, this is, um, I found this on Instagram. When I was first learning JavaScript, I was so excited to learn how I could manipulate different images. And everyone in my class was, you know, finding a stock image of something and, you know, making it go big and small. And I guess this will give you a little bit of an insight into what it was like learning JavaScript with me. Um, <laughs> so here's this image. Uh, this is what I was working with buttons in different ways to enlarge different images. I have this sloth pope here. Um, it says over here coding important stuff. So this is my very, very first, you know, kind of a foray into JavaScript during my boot camp. Um, I also have, let's see, let me move this over. Um, next up here, if we have any other musical theater fans uh, tuning in to the talk today, if you've ever heard the musical Rent, or maybe you know the song 525,600 minutes, um, I wanted to showcase this with JavaScript. This is very bad JavaScript. It's my very, very early, early JavaScript days. But you can see here, I made all these variables. I was learning about variables, and I made all the different variables for time, and then uh, I, <laughs> I made this kind of phone. Uh, a time calculator that confirmed that, yes, there were in fact 525,600 minutes in a year. Um, so I put, yes, rent was right. Um, but thus began my journey of having fun while learning. Now, I'll never forget, in my boot camp, we were practicing whiteboarding. And this was my first time ever, ever, you know, doing any kind of whiteboarding in my life. And uh, I was doing, they, they gave me a sample, some sample code, and I was, you know, solving for X. And I made, uh, I think the problem was like, you have, you know, 12 pigs and you need to put them all in this pen. How do you calculate blah, blah, blah. And um, I remember I was making my variables like let X equal piggies and let Y equal you know, horsies. And I got feedback <laughs> after I did that, that said, you know, that, that was great. You solved it correctly. Um, but, you know, you might want to make sure that when you are interviewing that you keep things very serious. And I remember in that moment, of course, I was very early in my career, had, had never interviewed before, but I remember saying and, and keeping this with me, and I've kept this, this, you know, concept with me throughout my whole career. I don't think I want to work somewhere that doesn't allow me to have fun that doesn't like me using the variable piggies or doggies or horsies. So I encourage you to find environments that you can work in that let you be your authentic self and have fun. Of course, you have to be professional when appropriate, but I'll never forget that, that uh, my variable piggies, uh, you know, probably wasn't the best choice, but it was something that, you know, it helped me learn the concept. All right. So now we get to the fun part of the talk where I'm going to talk about all of my favorite things in JavaScript. I know we have a lot of musical references in here, so, so hopefully we have some musical theater fans in the chat. Um, this image, of course, is from The Sound of Music. That's Julie Andrews. And uh, it's the origin for this talk, which is, these are a few of my favorite things. I did Google the Spanish lyrics to my favorite things, and I really tried <laughs> to memorize them for this talk, but I couldn't get it together in time. So maybe video coming soon on the on the Spanish Spanish language version of this. So these are a few of my favorite things. Dot js. So in preparation for this talk, I, I kind of combed together all of my my favorite projects that I know have been built with JavaScript. And this first one is, of course, a very silly one, um, but it's called Com Comcastify.js. And this is an open source project created by The Onion. If you're not familiar with The Onion, it's a wonderful parody um, comedy website that does, you know, kind of fake articles. Um, and uh, this is called Comcastify.js. And you're probably wondering, what is Comcastify? 
Well, if you're familiar with Comcast, Comcast is a, a local um, internet company that a lot of people use. And back in back in my day, um, it took a really long time for images to load. <laughs> so this is a very simple, silly um, JavaScript project that slows down the loading of your photos. I'll refresh this real quick. <laughs> so you can add this to your website and get a nostalgic uh, loading of your image. So it'll feel like you're back in the early to mid 2000s where we were all on AOL Instant Messenger and my MySpace and LiveJournal um, waiting for these very, very large image files to load. So shout out to Comcastify.js. This one definitely made me giggle when I um, found out that existed. And this is all available on GitHub. I bet by the time we scroll through all of the pages here, um, the, the, it will not have loaded. But it's so cool. I mean, like, it's a very <laughs> silly project, but it's. I love that someone took the time to create something like this. It, it gets, gives me giggling. All right, the next one that I have here is a robot, which I actually have over here in the corner of my room. So this is a Misty robot. It's a very, very cool robot that you can program to do all kinds of things, and you actually program it with JavaScript. How cool, right? Um, and the Misty robot's really cool. It has all these, you know, sensors in it. People have used the Misty robot to, um, you know, patrol the different floors of a of a brewery to make sure that things are going well. Um, there are different ways that it can greet people or help people on board. Um, there's one that's been put in the library that can help people find books. Now, me in particular, um, you're not going to be able to hear sound on this, but I actually worked with the Misty Robotics folks to program a duet with this robot. Um, I'm saying a lot of duets in my career, but this was a really cool opportunity that I got to involve my musical theater background with my coding skills. So you can check this out um, after the talk if you'd like, um, and, and I'll make sure to tweet it out after this talk. But um, if you know the song, Baby It's Cold Outside, we basically made a new version of Baby It's Cold Outside where this Misty robot um, told us the temperature. It told us what our Uber ETA was. It did all these funny things. You can check that out a little bit later. But how cool that we can program a robot with JavaScript. Uh, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, this is one of my favorite uh, projects that I've built with JavaScript. And this is my fake boyfriend app. And you're probably thinking, uh, what? Fake boyfriend? Well, um, if you've ever met me before, you probably... Or, or just have seen me in general, you probably think I'm an extrovert, but I'm actually an ambivert, which is an introverted extrovert. So what that really means is I need some time to recharge after I've been around people. <laughs> Too much peopling for me can be a lot. Um, and I built this app because I was going to a lot of conferences and there would often be times where I felt like I needed to, to leave. I would get anxious and I need to recharge. So I had this, um, this button here, this flick button. And essentially what this project was is I used JavaScript and Azure functions to trigger an Azure function. So if you clicked it once, um, it would send a, a text message to uh, my phone from my fake boyfriend that I created. And if I clicked it twice, it would call me. So I'd have to be like, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go take this. Um, there is a GitHub repo for this that you can check out. It's all open sourced. Here's a little example of what it looks like here. Um, I also have a video of it somewhere. Basically, there's a voice that uses the Twilio API. So um, when it would call, it had this uh, you know, voice that would go, hello, it is I, your boyfriend. Please call me back as soon as you can. Um, and what was really cool about this project is uh, people ended up making different versions of it themselves because, you know, not everybody needs a fake boyfriend. Some people need a fake daughter or a fake husband or, you know, a fake boss. Um, some people were making, taking this project and making fake pager duty alerts, which I thought was so creative. Like, oh, I have to go. This is a pager duty alert. Uh, my favorite uh, version of this, I gave a workshop of this fake boyfriend application. Um, and you can find this on my GitHub repo. I'll also tweet out a link to this. Um, but my favorite was I, I ran a workshop of this new New York, and there was a woman who attended who changed the project so when uh, instead of it being a fake boyfriend, it would send, um, hey now, you're an all-star <laughs> to the phone. And um, it was very cool because Smash Mouth ended up retweeting her and I thought, oh, that's so cool. Like, how often do you get to make a JavaScript project and Smash Mouth retweets you? Some pretty fun stuff. So I loved that project because it felt like anytime that I taught it, people just really enjoyed 
learning. And also, speaking of fun things, this flick button here, I used to give workshops on this. And when you use a flick button or on the flick button version one, the out of the box features of that button, the very first one is a fart generator. And I will never forget, I went to Canada. I got asked to present my fake boyfriend workshop and I was in this room full of, you know, probably 50 very senior front end engineers at this company. And, um, I was teaching, it was my first time teaching the workshop. And as soon as everybody downloaded the flick button app, all of a sudden I kept hearing (laughs) and it was all these very senior engineers making fart noises with the buttons. (laughs) The more that you can have fun while you're learning the better, right? Um, Here is one of my favorite projects that it was kind of a a group and community method, sort of. So um, I was on Twitter one day and I tweeted out a tweet that basically said, I think that your Mario Kart character says a lot more about you than your astrology sign because an astrology sign you can't pick, but your Mario Kart character is something that you choose and something that, you know, speaks to your personality. And it became a little bit of a joke and people were asking me, oh, what does, what does Yoshi say about me? Or what does Mario say? Or if I'm playing as Cat Peach or Donkey Kong, what does that mean? And I was making up fake horoscopes and a very, very cool, um, Twitter follower that I have named Steven uh, created, showed me these really cool libraries, um, nes.css. Um, there's also an NES React uh, thing. And we ended up making Mario Kart astrology. So I built all of the, you know, kind of back end features of using um, the face API and and different ways to, to determine from cosplaying images of Mario Kart what that would mean about them. But let me show you my favorite. So I would say probably some of my favorite uh, libraries here. So here's the project. You can check it out um, on GitHub. I've got all the information here. But did you know that there is an NES React library. Um, it's really, really cool. So there's all these component libraries that you can use. I want to add this to my personal website. Um, look at all this. This is, you can have all of these different um, Nintendo, uh, this is a whole whole library of, of tools that you can make kind of Nintendoize your project. Um, and this was really, you know, my intro in a lot of ways to just the really creative and cool JavaScript projects that existed out there. So shout out to Steven for, for showing me um, all of the different things that you can do. Like I had no idea that there was this whole community. We also have nes.css here of people who enthusiastically build libraries to, you know, aesthetically make your, your project really fun. Okay. A couple more. Um, this one here is definitely one of my faves. Okay. Raise your hand in the chat. If you love Microsoft paint, I know I do. (laughs) I grew up using Microsoft paint for all kinds of things. Um, there is actually JS Paint. Um, shout out to my mentor at Microsoft, Suze Hinton, who told me all about this. You can host a JavaScript version of Paint yourself locally, or you can go to jspaint.app right now. Here, I'll make a little, let's do, oh, I like the, let's see, JS, my handwriting's so bad on here, rules. Um, but this is all built with JavaScript. This is literally Paint in the browser. Using JavaScript, pretty cool stuff. Um, this is probably one of my favorite favorite uses of JavaScript out in the wild. But you can go and play with Paint anytime that you want. Shout out to JS Paint, one of the coolest projects out there. Okay, last but not least, I love um, hardware. As I mentioned before, I love taking apart different, uh, you know, toys that I have and and different, um, you know, like my Furbies and my Teddy Ruxpin and everything like that. Here is one of my favorite, favorite things. Now, I used to go to a lot of conferences back in the day, and I used to walk around with this on. And you're probably wondering, what is this? Um, so this is a really cool name badge. I would walk around. I'd have it around my neck. And it's shaped like a bear. It's got all this stuff. But I actually programmed this badge using JavaScript. So cool, right? And people would come up to me and say, oh, what is that? It was actually a kid's toy, which is really funny because a lot of like dads (laughs) really enjoy it and be like, I want to get one. Um, But as you can see, I put, hi, I'm Chloe. I work at Microsoft. And then I had a little uh, ghost from Pac-Man go back and forth. And here's the really, really cool thing about this. And if you have 
a child in your life, or maybe someone, even an adult who's looking to get introduced to JavaScript, this is a Microsoft tool. Um, it's all in the browser, pretty cool stuff. And it is using a micro bit. So the micro bit, as you can see here, um, just slides into this little screen area. Um, it's got some purple plastic in front of it, of course, but you connect the micro bit to your computer. Um, you have all of these kind of drag and drop things here. So let's just, let's just add one. So I can go, let's see, to basic here. I can add a string if I want. Here, let's, let's make a string. Let's do another string. So currently I have on start, repeat four times, show this icon a heart, show this icon a smiley face, say hello. Let's change this to jsconfmx. Woohoo. And now when we play that, it'll go like this. We got our heart, we got our smiley face. We get this little demo here. The word's going across the screen. Hello. JS Conf MX. <laughs> uh, you get the idea. But what's really cool is if you toggle over here, this is all JavaScript. This is all built with JavaScript. So if you want to build something and then look at what the JavaScript looks like, that's possible. You can code this in JavaScript if you want to. And then all you have to do is download the file and then upload it onto your onto your micro bit. Pretty cool stuff. If you have a kid in your life, definitely, definitely get a micro bit. It's a really, really cool project, even for adults. I think adults have more fun with it, to be honest. So all of this is to say, I've shown you all these fun projects and you're probably thinking, Chloe, I work on really, really serious technical concepts. How do I incorporate fun into it? Well, I encourage you to find the fun in everything that you do. You know, it doesn't matter if you're working on Kubernetes or Docker or really, really deep technical concepts. When you are teaching things to other people, find ways to make it resonate with them. That doesn't have to be humor. That's the choice that I always make. It can be showing an example of how your technology affects different communities. It can be a way of, you know, really showcasing the way um, and making people remember and having that information stick with the person that you're teaching. Think about those teachers that you had when you were learning technology or even when you were learning other concepts and try to think how you can apply those teaching methods to other people. And remember, it's important. Always have fun. If you're not having fun, then, you know, maybe rethink. <laughs> rethink your life choices. No, but we do really, really serious stuff as engineers. And I think it's important to understand that we're all humans. We're all people. And the more that we can enjoy what we're doing and really find the joy in what we create, the better. So that is all for me. Don't forget to have fun. Gracias for having me. Um, if you want to continue the conversation in any way, I'm on Twitter. I'm happy to chat uh, all kinds of things JavaScript, talk more about some of these really cool and interesting projects that I've shared with you all today. Um, but that is it for me. And I think it's time for questions. Preguntas. <laughs>